Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. This is Mike Brennan here at the National Hurricane Center. It's just after 4 p.m. Central Time on Saturday, July 6th, coming on with the latest on Tropical Storm Barrel. The big news here and our latest uh, forecast and advisory coming out from the National Hurricane Center is we've now issued storm surge and hurricane warnings for portions of the Texas coast. We'll get to details on that in just a minute. But Barrel continues to be a tropical storm this afternoon with maximum sustained winds of about 60 miles per hour. Now moving off a little more uh, to the northwest at 13 miles per hour, centered about 300 and 85 miles southeast of Corpus Christi, Texas. And Barrel is going to continue moving northwestward and then turn northward and approach the coast of Texas within the hurricane and storm surge warning areas overnight, Sunday night, and into early Monday morning. Uh, actually, you can see on the radar now some of the outer rain bands associated with Barrel uh, in the offshore waters out over the Gulf of Mexico. We've seen some heavy rainfall also developed in portions of southeast Texas this afternoon, setting the stage for what's going to be a prolonged heavy rainfall event across much of the Texas Gulf Coast and into East Texas uh, into portions of next week. So let's talk first about the storm surge. We've got a storm surge warning that's now been issued from the north entrance of the South Padre Island National Seashore all the way up to San Luis Pass. That includes places like Corpus Christi Bay, Mesquite Bay, Matagorda Bay. Uh, we are looking at the danger of life-threatening inundation from storm surge everywhere you see in this dark purple area. And if we get to the uh, expected storm surge inundation that we're going to see in here, somewhere between Mesquite Bay and Sargent, including Matagorda, Gorda Bay, we expect to see four to six feet of inundation above ground level uh, in this area. So this is the area we're most concerned about, but also could see, we're expecting to see three to five feet from Sargent up to San Luis Pass, and also south of Mesquite Bay down to the north entrance of the South Padre Island National Seashore. We also have a storm surge watch in effect up in uh, Galveston Bay, uh, where we could see two to four feet of inundation in that region, and also up to Sabine Pass uh, near the uh, Texas-Louisiana border. So again, the potential for widespread storm surge inundation with barrel as the system makes landfall Sunday night and Monday morning. That's when we're going to see those highest water levels. So if you live in these storm surge warning areas, uh, know if you live in a storm surge evacuation zone, you may be asked to leave or a voluntary evacuation requested by your local officials. Please comply with any evacuation orders you have uh, through tonight and through most of the day tomorrow to get to a safe place out of that storm surge evacuation zone. And uh, so again, have that evacuation plan in place and this is the time to put it into motion if you've been asked to do so by your local officials. On the uh, wind front, we've now issued a hurricane warning uh, from Baffin Bay up to Sargent. Uh, with a tropical storm warning now from north of Sargent up to High Island and south of Baffin Bay down to the mouth of the Rio Grande and into northeastern Mexico. Uh, we are expecting Barrel to reach a more favorable environment and re-strengthen to a hurricane uh, by tomorrow and then continue strengthening as it approaches the Texas coast uh, tomorrow night and early Monday. And uh, again, Anywhere in this hurricane warning area, you have to prepare as if you're going to experience hurricane force winds, you know, when you want to uh, you know, put shutters up, uh, tie down anything loose outside, gather anything, secure your home. This is the time to get that done. You're going to have during the uh, most of the day tomorrow into at least to the early afternoon hours before those tropical storm conditions arrive. But again, you just have a few hours left, the less than a day to get ready for this event. And you don't want to pay too much attention to the exact track forecast. There's a reason we put up this hurricane warning here for this wide area. If the storm makes a little bit to a left turn, it's going to come in uh, farther down the lower Texas coast, a little right turn. It's going to come up closer to that San Luis Pass area. So everywhere in here needs to prepare. It won't take much of a change in the eventual track of the center to bring those hurricane conditions on shore anywhere in that hurricane warning area. Now, again, looking at the timing, uh, farther south, we could see those tropical storm force conditions begin during the day Sunday. Uh, been up by late Sunday afternoon, early Sunday evening within that hurricane warning area. And then uh, advancing uh, inland, there is an inland risk of tropical storm conditions uh, across portions of south of the mid-Texas coast and into southeast Texas as well. So be on the lookout for any tropical storm watches or warnings issued for inland areas there. Next, we'll move on to the rainfall. Rainfall is going to be a big story with Barrel as the system moves inland, and it's going to bring very heavy rainfall to portions of the Texas Gulf Coast, especially near where landfall occurs, and also much of East Texas as the system moves slowly north-northeastward 
inland over the day, during the day Monday and into Tuesday and even into Wednesday, we could see widespread rainfall totals of five to 10 inches across this region with isolated totals as high as 15 inches uh, across portions of uh, eastern Texas. And so that's very concerning from a flooding perspective. Uh, we're most concerned about this area here as we get into the day on Monday that includes Houston, Palestine, Bryan College Station, Victoria, down from that area where uh, barrels likely to make landfall up along the track of the center. That's where we have a level three out of four risk for flash flooding. So again, if you're in a flood prone area, even well inland, uh, the winds don't really matter when you get that far inland as far as the rainfall being a big threat. It's regardless of how strong the storm is from a wind perspective. So be on the lookout for flood watches and warnings that could be issued for your area. Know where you're gonna go, how you're gonna keep yourself safe if you live in a flood prone area and uh, water begins to rise where you are. Uh, onto the uh, tornado front, we have a risk of tornadoes uh, starting late Sunday into Sunday night, especially along much of the uh, Texas Gulf Coast from the Houston Galveston area all the way down to Corpus Christi in the right front quadrant of barrel circulation as those rain bands begin to move on shore. We could see uh, tor tornadoes and tropical storm and hurricane rain bands can spin up very quickly and can be damaging in some cases. So you're going to, again, want to have multiple ways to get emergency information and weather alerts uh, anywhere in these hurricanes storm surge warning areas. Make sure you have a NOAA weather radio, wireless emergency alerts turned on on your phone so that you have a way, especially at, overnight, if there's a tornado or flash flood warning issued for your area, that you have a way to be alerted and you can get to safety. I uh, do want to again touch on the rip current risk. This is a big, pro a big uh, risk along the entire Gulf of Mexico coast, not just along the Texas coast, but all the way over to the Florida coast, uh, including the, the Florida Panhandle, the Florida West Coast, Mississippi, Alabama beaches. Uh, rip currents are going to be uh, uh, along much of the Gulf Coast, uh, already beginning today, continuing through the rest of the weekend into early next week. So please heed any advice or those warning flags at the beach, and please stay out of the water if the ocean does not appear safe. So we'll wrap up here with some key messages. We have that danger of life-threatening storm surge all the way from the north entrance of the South Padre Island National Seashore up to San Luis Pass. Uh, there's the uh, expectation of hurricane force winds occurring somewhere in that hurricane warning area from Baffin Bay to Sargent. Uh, so if you're in those areas, pay attention to any advice you're given by your local officials and rush those preparations to protect your life and property to completion. We are expecting flash and urban flooding, some of which, which could be pretty considerable across portions of the Texas Gulf Coast and eastern Texas as we go from Sunday through the middle of next week with river flooding also possible. I do want to finally mention that risk of rip currents along much of the Gulf Coast. So uh, during the next you know, 24 to 36 hours, 48 hours, let's keep checking in uh, for the latest updates on barrel from here at the National Hurricane Center at hurricanes.gov. Uh, you can find your local National Weather Service office at weather.gov and find information local and to your area, including all the watches and warnings that are in effect. And again, just a reminder, have multiple ways to get emergency information through NOAA weather radio, wireless emergency alerts on your phone or, or smartphone apps as well. So again, we'll keep uh, checking in with you from here at the National Hurricane Center through the day tomorrow and Monday as we uh, deal with barrels expected landfall along the Texas coast as a hurricane. I'm Mike Brennan. Thanks for joining us uh, from here at the National Hurricane Center.